Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, a proud partner of Angler and Hunter Television, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms, Rapala, Winchester Ammunition, Bushnell, Excalibur Crossbows, and Yukon Gear. Fishing and hunting are pretty rewarding pastimes. Not only do they allow you to spend more time outdoors, but they also let you get up close and personal with wildlife. How's your shoulder after that? Hurt. It's these encounters and experiences that create memories and traditions that can last a lifetime. Huh. I don't know if it'll fit. <laughs> Most anglers and hunters work very hard and often save vacation time or specific weekends so they can fish or hunt during certain open seasons. An actual time spent in the field can be only a few days per year. Oh, that's why you fold it. Yeah. The reality of it is, no matter how big or how close to a record any game may be, they all count as either food for the table or an experience that won't soon be forgotten. Recently, I was able to take part in Ontario's right spring bear hunting season. This was an opportunity for Ontarians to hunt bear in the spring after 15 years of it being closed. I was successful in the first year and took a beautiful bear. He didn't go 15 yards. First spring bear in 15 years in Ontario, right there. Yes! This was a monumental achievement for me and I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to do this again and wanted to preserve this memory, so I decided to have the bear mounted by a taxidermist. This might be one of my most gratifying hunts ever. Well, it turns out that yeah. not all taxidermists are created First equal. Black bear for me. Yes, you know, it was that was bad. Fortunately, in the second year of the pilot program, I was able to harvest an even more magnificent bear. One that I would say is one of my greatest career highlights. Look at the head on him. <laughs> oh, wow, I can't even lift his head, it's so heavy. This time, I'm doing my research on taxidermists. Just incredible, wow. That's probably uh, the biggest bear I've ever shot. You're not gonna deny that, he is a tank. This is a perfect lesson for those of you that want to capture a memory or a moment in time from a fishing or hunting experience by having your prize mounted. After doing some web searches and talking to fellow anglers and hunters, I was convinced that a guy just outside Lindsay, Ontario was one of the best in the business. Like I said, this was I called Ron bear. Armstrong and gave him the lowdown on my previous bear, and he was quick years, to invite so me out to his shop. It doesn't look like a very big bear, does it? No, now, no it I looks really you, small. I showed you a picture. Uh, everybody saw that bear last year on the show, uh, but this is a, a, not a very good piece of work, yeah, I would we, say. We can call this the incredible shrinking bear. <laughs> <laughs> so people, uh, b explain this, because we're going to um, move on to the bear that I got this year. Right. But the importance of this guy is still there yeah, yeah. because they've reinstated the bear hunt, but um, the next bear, he was a pretty big bear and we got lucky with him, but he's uh, 
uh, it, to me, that's probably the last bear uh, that I'll ever mount because it's probably one of the bigger bears that I'll ever oh, get. Yeah, and, it's big. And the story behind yeah. him was awesome. So yeah. let's go uh, have a look. Okay. Just looking around his showroom gave me peace of mind that my bear was in good hands. That's incredible how it takes form like that. Took all of two hands on this guy's head to hold him up for a picture. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, I, a, it's a huge head. Yeah, I could barely I could barely lift it. So I guess I'm ready to sew now. Okay. So we'll, we'll sew. He assured me uh, that the bear I brought him would be done in a few months and, and that I would be very happy with his work. This, uh, sure. Excess skin around the eyes are gonna tuck in, shape the nose, and uh, have a bear done. Perfect. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Personally, I've never set any records or even come close to taking a world-class big game animal. And I do this for a living. I'll take it any day. Wow. On the other hand, I have gained an unbelievable respect and appreciation for what we as Canadians have in our very own backyards. Now, deer hunting is one of my favorite things to do. Scouting the woods, setting up trail cameras to track movement, and placing stands in high traffic areas are all part of the process. I do all of this with the hopes of one, filling my tag and getting a freezer full of high quality meat, and two, for the pure love of the hunt. Thank you. Now we all know bucks are very elusive and can be a real challenge to make contact with. That's why as part of the management plan, there's a draw system that gives us a chance at an antlerless deer tag, which can often up the odds for hunters looking to fill a tag. In past seasons, I've had some incredible hunts and even had some real wall hanger class bucks in my sights. But more often than not, I had great opportunities for does, but never had a tag. This season, however, I made sure to apply for a doe tag in an area where I had a great chance at harvesting a doe. I captured some great shots of a giant buck on my trail cameras. It would come through the field in early evening and dawn hours. I set up a couple stands and was certain that this season I'd be filling my tag in no time. You're not gonna believe this. It's Christmas Eve. I'm in a tree stand. There's like six days left in deer season. And uh, it has been tough. One of the toughest years I've, uh, I've had and that I can remember. Mild weather hung around late into the fall and I had countless days of seeing absolutely nothing. Deer were very nocturnal and it wasn't until a cold snap hit that I finally had a deer come into the field. Okay, so I'm back in the ground blind. And I got lucky enough to draw a doe tag. No, it's exciting to shoot a big buck and a real challenge because they're elusive. But at the end of the day, if you want to fill a tag and uh, you have a week or two to do it in Ontario and you get an antlerless tag, there's a good chance you, you know, does will come out um, more often than bucks into the open. my crossbow. She's directly downwind to me. That's a lot of wind blowing straight at her. I mean, even my breath could make her nervous. My breath makes a lot of people nervous. <laughs> a strong wind was blowing my scent towards this big doe. She locked up at about 60 yards. She's too far out of range for my crossbow. A few more, and I'd be able to make a shot with the Excalibur, but no such luck. God, she's just out of range. The end of the season was creeping up on me and there was no action anywhere. I decided to move and set up on the edge of a cornfield in a box blind. There were often plenty of deer in this field, but for some reason they rarely came near the blind. At this point, I'm willing to chance it. Hopefully I get a shot out of this box. I'm pretty confident. A lot of tracks, a lot of sign in this cornfield. Oh man, this is working out good. Two 
was a one fawn. This is awesome. Those deer are pretty nervous. Man, what's scaring them? Oh, look out over here. This came out. It's a turkey with a limp. You could have the perfect setup. Ready for anything. And then the strangest thing like that happens and spooks the deer. Oh, this deer's gonna come out of me. This is great. Got a Mexican standoff. Come on. Did somebody do something? There's still a million yards from me. But the coolest part of this hunting trip so far this year is imagine I've seen one deer all year. Now I've got three in front of me and they're hung up with a turkey. <laughs> You don't get to see this though, man. This is the coolest part of hunting. I only wish uh, I could have my little girl August with me here. She loves this kind of stuff. I'll, I'll show her the film. Is that a deer over there? Yep. Yeah, it's a doe. You're not gonna believe this. I got three deer on the hill behind this. Look at them all. The original three or four deer are still in the field. But there's a pile of them coming in here. Five there. Six. Seven. Eight, nine. Ten. Eleven. And they're all just outside of a hundred yards from us. It's supposed to warm up again tomorrow. This is perfect. I'm running out of daylight quick though. There's a couple of nice toes in that group. Here to the right, to the right. Yeah. Wait a oh. oh, talk about last minute. I think I got that dough. It's hard to tell. I'll have to watch that shot back. A lot of coyotes around here. Look at this. There's a jawbone of a deer. A coyote must have got. And here is where you can see my deer crashed right through. She went down, crashed in here. Look at that. Rib cage. A leg. Coyote's got a deer here. Yeah, she crashed in here. Look at this. Look at this. I found it. Hair. And blood. My arrow stuck in the long grass. Broken in half. This the luminoc broke off after it passed through. Must have hit shoulder blade. Oh, I gotta find this deer now that it's getting dark. Yeah well. It's going to be worth it when I get it. Go back and get a brighter light. Man, listen to that. Let's hope they don't find that deer. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. This was the first time I've ever had to leave an animal overnight. It wore on me heavily and I hardly slept that night. My arrow is covered in blood, and it's broken. First light the next day had me back in the field and in desperate hopes of finding my deer intact. Let's go see if we can find her. There's that jawbone I was talking about last night. Right here, look at this. Piece of snow with blood on it. And here, a leaf with blood on it. So this is where I made the hit right here. And she fell and then ran right through here. You'll see the trail right through here. Yes. So it's a straight line. You're not going to believe what's right here. It's a cliff. 
that's about a 15 foot drop down to that creek bottom. You can hear me crashing through the ice. Here's blood. That's not much to go on. Just as big as my fingertip. Looks like she went off that hill. Oh, there's some really good blood. Oh, please, look at this. Now, ideally you want to see a stream of blood, but there's lots of steady, good drops of blood here. Look at this. One good thing about uh, a wounded deer bleeding going uphill is it's going to pump out a lot of blood climbing. And as you can see by that right there, that was a good, uh, that was a good dump. Oh, wow. Look at this barbed wire fence with hair in it. I'm getting close to finding this deer. I know it. And there's blood, more blood. Now we're talking. I'm getting pretty far now. Close to, I'm gonna say 300 yards. Came crunching through here. Well, there she is, right here. Yes, I got her. What can I say? Look at the hair that came out of her when she got caught in that fence. <sighs> okay. Whew. That's what I'm talking about. Exit wounds right here. I hit her great. Oh, she is stiff. And I went in right here behind the shoulder. I can't believe this deer went as far as she did. <sighs> Thank you. I didn't think I was going to find this deer. It was a bad night last night. I could hardly sleep. Woo! I'm going to put the Camillas to work. I'm going to drag her out. <laughs> I don't know whether to cry or just enjoy the moment. Man. Amazing. I managed to fill a tag and had some incredible experiences with those deer. So you see, it's not all about setting a record. Which reminds me. I have to go to Ron's taxidermy and pick up my bear. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition. To get the edge over the deer, I use the Excalibur Micro 335 with a 125 grain fixed blade broadhead. A Bushnell 10 power monocular made scanning field edges a snap and Yukon Gear's Tech Parka kept me warm in all the conditions. A Camillus knife made for efficient field dressing and deboning of my deer. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Canadian Tire. Canada is a vast and varied land, and no one understands that better than anglers and hunters. And no one understands anglers and hunters better than Canadian Tire. With close to 500 stores coast to coast and specialized pro shops that carry an enhanced assortment of top brand names, you can be sure to find everything you need for your next fishing or hunting trip. For many Canadians, deer season is a week where no work gets done and life gets put on hold. And with so much on the line, it's wise to want to up your odds of harvesting some venison for the freezer. Hunters can get the upper hand by using a few tricks, like adding mineral tractants near stands, like Wild Game Innovation's Apple Crush, or a salt block that has a time release formula that will have deer visiting regularly. Installing game cameras at these sites, like this 10 megapixel Wild Game Innovation's high performance game camera that shoots HD video or 10 megapixel stills out to 70 feet thanks to an invisible infrared flash that will illuminate deer without spooking them. It'll give you the upper hand come opening day. Whether you're an experienced hunter or just getting started, Canadian Tire has the quality brands you expect and the cool new products you need. To see more, check out your local Canadian Tire store or go online to canadiantire.ca slash proshop. Wow, looks good. Hey, I appreciate this. Dried up nicely. I think the last time we saw it, you were just touching up the eyes and that, but yeah. uh, wow, it's... Uh, 
fantastic. Yeah, it turned out nice. The hide's really good, and uh, it's, it's huge. It's a huge bear. Yeah, well, when you see the show, he had a bit of a, you see the, the, the hair on his neck, he had a bit of a mane. Yeah. Where his hair stood up, and we, we all we all recognize that. And even here, it's such nice, such nice fur. You got the scars on his nose. I mean, um, that's heads and tails, uh, night and day, above uh, the other bear I had. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, wow. Looks, looks a little better. Yes, you're not you're not kidding. He's almost as big as a polar bear. I think it is as big as a polar bear. <laughs> but that uh, right there, that's going to look good hanging up. I mean, that's why you go to a professional. Well, a, well that truly is. A, that's a trophy bear. Yeah, and like, if you're going to uh, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. I mean, we we should learn that lesson. Um, I never thought I'd uh, start collecting uh, mounts, but. Uh, you never know. Now, if I get a deer, I'm going to want to get one done because I've seen some of your deer here are, uh, are beautiful. So. Well, it seems like when you get one mount done, it's almost addicting. You have to have another one to <laughs> match it up to the wall. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll get this guy home and hang him up. And uh, you never know, if I knock down a big old deer one day, I'll bring him back and let you work your magic on him. Sounds good. Awesome. Much appreciated. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms, Rapala, Winchester Ammunition, Bushnell, Excalibur Crossbows and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, Conserve and protect our great outdoors.